Hello, Hatim. Come say hi in the chat for those of you who are coming in now. Welcome. Hello, hello. Nice to see you again, Hatim. I hope I'm saying your name right. Please let me know in the chat. <clears throat> so we'll wait until more people trickle in. Okay, Hatim, Hatim. Okay, good. All right. How are you? How are you liking the webinars, Hatim? Let me know. Oh, you're in the office. Okay, great. And where are you coming in from? What what part of the world are you in currently? France. Oh, very cool. Wonderful. That's great. All right. Have you been able to experience the, um, oh, so you're improving English for your job. That's great. That's wonderful. And how are you, how do you feel with, in terms of, you know, what, what progress you've been making? How, how do you feel on that front? Oh, that's great. I'm very happy you like the coaching and all of that. If you want to, you come in and, you know, do the web, um, the video calls with us, you're more than welcome to. We have two different plans. Um, you know, if this is something that you want to do, then you should consider it and you get a one week free trial on either of those plans. That might be a, a great way to connect with other members too and, you know, find a speaking partner and be able to, you know, chat with people, which is great. Hi, Liliana. Hi, Praveen. Hi, Mohammed. Come say hi in the chat. I was just having a nice chat with Hatim. Come say hi. Tell us what you're excited about in today's webinar. It's great to see all of you here. Thanks for joining me. Wherever you are in the world, whether it be morning, afternoon, evening, it's wonderful to have you here. All right. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Before I do that, I really do um, encourage you to use the chat so that you can chat with other people, communicate, you know, with each other, send in your questions. The benefit of doing this live in our community at Exploring Academy is that you're able to participate and ask your questions and I'm able to answer them on the call. Um, and, you know, you get feedback too, right? Real time feedback, which is wonderful. So that's a big perk of being here live joining us. And then for those of you who are watching the live replay with the interactive chat on YouTube, then I encourage you to come join us live in the community so that you can also experience what that's like. So that's just a little side note. And with that being said, I'll welcome the people who've just joined us. Hi. Hello, Robinson Fernando. Robinson Fernando has joined us. So that's great. Come say hi in the chat. Tell us something, you know, that you'd like to share, whether it be what your favorite color is or where you're joining us from or how you found Exploring Academy. We welcome all of that in the chat. So feel free to share it. All right. So I hope everyone's excited for this webinar. I know that they've been striking a chord and I'm very happy to hear that. I've gotten some great feedback and, you know, I'm, I'm really happy that you're setting aside this time now to join us and be here and invest in yourself because that's, that's important, right? We are investing in our professional skills. This Exploring Academy is a professional skills development platform. And we focus on communication at the crux of what we do, because that's what we do every day as human beings. And whether it be for work or for our social lives or the friends that we have, you know, we families, everything we do is surrounding 
is is about communication, right? That surrounds us. That's the if you distill all, you know, all the things that we do in the day, it's about social interaction, right? A lot of it. So it's exciting. Um, Liliana says, I appreciate this opportunity to learn English. Welcome. That's wonderful to hear, Liliana. And Robertson Fernando says, hello for Colombia. It's great to be here. Thank you. Well, I'm happy to have you. And I think we're ready to get this party started. I mean, it's already begun, but we'll, we'll, we'll launch it now. All right. So hi, everybody. Come and say hi to, hi to us in the chat for those of you just joining. Welcome today's web to today's webinar. <laughs> I'm Mary Daphne. I am CEO and co-founder of Exploring and Advanced English, and I'm head of community here in the Academy, in our very own Exploring Academy. So we today are going to talk about transitioning from conversational English to business English. So we'll talk about how, you know, how it differs how it differs from conversational English, because yes, there is a difference. Both are important, but again, we're talking about, you know, different situations where you might be in a professional setting, you might be at work, you might be in an interview, you might be, uh, you know, talking to stakeholders or even, you know, colleagues. And you need, it to, you need to know the difference between conversational English and business English, right? And how we use it. Mastering business English is going to help open doors for you professionally and help you communicate even more effectively in the workplace. So that's very important, right? And being aware of both of these things and understanding how to navigate them and switch between the two. So we are going to address that. And for those of you who just joined, welcome, welcome. I'm very happy to have you here. All right. So let's continue. I want to welcome you again to this webinar. Um, like I said, I am the head of community here at Exploring Academy. So I've run the workshops and the sessions and the challenges. And if you are part of our community, you come on to calls with me and our fellow members for a wonderful group coaching experience. It's a nice small group coaching. And, you know, it's, it's an incredible opportunity. We get to chat with each other, learn from each other, and expand our horizons that way as well. And I'm here to empower you with communication strategies, confidence boosting techniques, and to help you reach social fluency, both in the workplace and in your personal lives, right? Where, where Whether it's making friends, um, landing those interviews, increasing your potential, um, you know, interacting cross-culturally, whatever it is, whatever your goals are, we help you achieve them here in the Academy through better conversation, better communication, and executive presence and reaching social fluency. If you are somebody who listens to our podcasts and somebody who watches our YouTube channel, <laughs> there are two <laughs> YouTube channels, <laughs> then I would really encourage you to share it with people so that they can have access to this free, high quality educational tool that is our YouTube channels and the Spotify and podcast. And then if they want to take their learning a step further and come in for coaching and web courses and the whole platform of our incredible professional development site at Exploring Academy, then you can direct them to this wonderful place at academy.exploring.co. All right. So now that we've got that housekeeping out of the way, um, maybe just a little bit about me so that you know, you know, you get you, you understand maybe my background and my experience. I've got uh, two masters. One of them is an advanced master's from Columbia University in New York City. I've got another master's from Bacheshire University. And then I was a double major in communication and in French. And that's where I have my undergrad from at Hamilton College. So that's a little bit about me. And then in some of my experience and what that includes, over a decade in cross-cultural communications, television, live broadcasting, education sector as well. I've been teaching and designing courses in communication, social skills, public speaking, 
executive skills, cross-cultural uh, communication and English for over 15 years, which is a long time um, and I love it. And then I've, I also emphasize technology, empirical research, data-backed teaching methodologies for high value student outcomes so that you enjoy the experience and that you that it's relevant to you and your lives. And that's what we do in our community. Everything we teach here is something that you can take away with you and use right after. Just like you see what we teach in these webinars, you know, it's that kind of experience where this is relevant to you, it will positively impact your life and it will stick with you. And all you have to do is practice it and show up and be consistent. And we make that very easy to do here in our community with our live video calls multiple live video calls every week. And if you're part of our executive communication plan, you get the most video calls in addition to all the, what we have to offer on the platform in terms of quiz, quests, quizzes, worksheets, interactive quizzes, um, web courses, you know, uh, a community of practice, conversation partners, the list goes on. There's prompts every day. There's something every single day for you to do here in our community. And it's very, very fun. I also have uh, experience training teachers. So teaching teachers how they can teach. And I've done that around the world. I've done that at Columbia University uh, in New York City, as well as at Baruch College, Hunter College um, in New York as well. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I do want to remind you to use the interactive chat because we have it and it's great so that you can be, you know, engaging with the material and with each other. Um, I want you to be respectful and kind, right? That's important, of course. And you can always feel free to ask questions during the, um, you know, the Q&A um, that follows the session and also during. And if it's relevant to what we're discussing at that moment on the slide, then I'm happy to address it. If not, then just hold it to the end. You can still put it in the chat, but I probably will wait until an opportune moment, a relevant time to address that so that it doesn't disrupt the flow of what we're chatting about. So if that all sounds good to you, then give me your favorite emoji in the chat, maybe a thumbs up if you would like, or something else you can be creative and now's a great time to silence your devices just be in the zone the, the learning zone keep an open mind be you know distraction free as best you can i know some of you are on your computers and you might be at work and that's fine because guess what this is a professional development session so if you're at work and you're doing this perfect because it's professional development so I'm going to take a sip of water and let's carry on. So I'm waiting for your emojis. Send me your favorite emoji in the chat and then we'll be on our merry way. All right. So today's agenda, we're going to talk about the basics of conversational English so that we get that frame of reference. Then we'll talk about the essentials of business English and then we'll look at the differences in tone. We'll look at some vocabulary shifts. We'll look at structural changes, and then we will have a little quiz and time for Q&A. And then I'm gonna make a special announcement at the end. So I really suggest you stick around until then, not just for the quiz, which people love, and I don't blame you. It's super fun to have those low stakes assessments. But I'm also gonna announce something very special that is near and dear to my heart. And yeah, I'm super stoked, super excited to share that with you. Okay. So thumbs up in the chat and let's take off here. Okay. So in terms of the basics of conversational English, we want to look at tone. We want to look at vocabulary and we want to look at structure. Okay, so for tone, you can think of conversational English having a relaxed and casual tone, right? Just in the way that you speak to your friends, your family, people to whom you're close, 
and it's just relaxed. There's not, not, you know, nothing really formulaic about it. It's not tense. It's relaxed and calm and comfortable, right? So let's, let's just check out some examples and you'll also see, you'll con we'll contrast that with the business English so that you get to see right from there, front and center, that difference, that stark contrast. Okay, so with greetings, for conversational, you might say, hey, what's up? What's up? Business English, you wouldn't say, hey, what's up? It would not be pro appropriate. You would say, good afternoon or good morning. How has your day been? How how's, how's your day been? How's your day been? How's it going? For making requests, right? Polite requests. If it's conversation, no, and you're, you know, you're chatting maybe with a colleague that you're really close with um, or maybe your mentee, you know, in the business setting, you can still have conversational English, but it's important to know when you, you switch those around. You might say, can you send me that file? Can you send me that file? But if it's business conversation, then you would say, could you please forward me the document at your earliest convenience? Right. So it's more words there and a little bit more complicated in some ways. If you're giving an update, we're almost done with the project. So you're, um, you know, let's say you're a supervisor and you have people working under you. They might say to you, we're almost done with the project. And, you know, maybe you're in a scrum meeting or something. And, you know, these are people with whom that, you know, with whom you interact every day and there's not really much hierarchy there could be this kind of banter right conversational we're almost done with the project but if it's more formal more businessy the project is nearing completion and is on track for timely delivery so this might be you know something that you might say this to a key stakeholder you might say this in a meeting right you might say this where it tends to be a little bit more formal there's more distance so that's something to be aware of right okay let's go on asking for clarification so what do you mean what do you mean what do you mean? What do you mean? That would be more conversational. Whereas, could you please elaborate on that point for better clarity? Or would you mind elaborating on that point for clarity? So it's more polite, a little bit more sophisticated, right? It's a little bit more, there's distance there. You can sense that distance between participants. When you're providing feedback, that's a cool idea. Now you might tell this to your friend. That's a cool idea. We don't want to use cool in business settings. It can come off and come across as a little bit unprofessional. So we really do want to be aware of that professional polish that we want to give our words, our sentences, our phrases, our communication. That's an excellent suggestion. It aligns well with our objectives, right? This is more businessy. It aligns well with our objectives. That's an excellent suggestion, right? You can still show enthusiasm, but you wouldn't say, that's a cool idea. Not really, right? Unless, I mean, of course, there are some circumstances where you might do that, and that's okay at work. But for the most part, you do want to have that distinction. And this is this is why you're here, because this is something that is not taught, right? Native speakers don't learn this either. This is something that, um, you know, we don't grow up learning. We have to learn it over time or through courses or through training or from being in a situation where we notice people are speaking differently, right? It's more sophisticated. It's more executive-like. And, and we want to be aware of that. But it's not like this is taught in school right? Even for L1 native English speakers. That's why I'm teaching it here in the academy. So what about discussing problems? We've got a problem. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> uh, or if it's business, there, be, there appears to be a challenge that requires our attention, right? Notice how the word problem becomes challenge. Challenge is more optimistic. It's more like we can overcome this challenge. We can surmount this challenge. Problem, 
can be a little bit, you know, it has more of like a little bit of a negative connotation. So we want to be aware of that. And we want to make sure that we are using the right terminology. Okay. When we're confirming plans, let's see the difference here. So we're meeting up at three, right? And this right, right, this tag at the end of the question, right? Right. We don't want to do that in business English. We would say, I look forward to our scheduled meeting at three, or I look forward to meeting you at three. Something more like along those lines. Okay, good. And then what about saying goodbye? See ya. How many of you have used this? See ya in your sort of everyday conversation, conversational English. See ya. See you around. See you later. But then we have for business, it'd be more like, thank you for your time today. I look forward to our next meeting. We don't say, see you later, see ya, right? That wouldn't be professional enough. And we want to be professional when the situation calls for it. We want to have that executive presence. We want to have that professional polish. Okay. How are we doing so far? I got a thumbs up from Hatim. So that's great. What else? Who else has a thumbs up in the chat? All right. So let's have a look at vocabulary. So this is now everyday words in slang. And we're going to look at some examples. So what's up, right? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? This is a casual greeting, and this is used to ask somebody how, what they're doing or how they're feeling, you know, what's been going on. It's a catch-all phrase for that. And again, this is everyday English. It's casual, slang, not to be used in the office, really. Cool, right? Cool. You might hear Americans use this. Um, we do. We do use this quite a bit. Um, but again, in a business setting, we want to be cognizant of that. So it's informal. It expresses approval, agreement, admiration. That movie was really cool. That movie was really cool. Dude, dude. Okay, this one definitely do not use in the office, right? It's a colloquial term. It's often used to refer to a person in a friendly manner, manner and regardless of gender. So people use it for men and women alike, uh, funnily enough. Um, I remember when I was growing up in high school, we would joke around and say that the female version of dude would be dudette. But unfortunately, that did not catch on and the vernacular did not pick up on that. So it's just dude. Um, for example, dude, you won't believe what happened. Dude, you won't believe what happened. Okay, so you wouldn't say this to your boss, of course. Uh, this is more of the, you know, the friendly banter you would have with a friend, a close friend. Um, so that's something to be aware of, of course. In terms of structure, right? We've got simple sentences, questions, and exclamations. Here are the examples. So a simple sentence, I'm hungry, right? Straightforward, expresses a basic need. Then we've got a question, are you coming? Are you coming? Direct inquiry, right? About somebody's plans or their intentions, what they're doing, exclamation, Wow, that's amazing, right? And of course, your nonverbals are going to follow. Your tone of voice is going to reflect that as well, right? Notice what I did with my hands, right? I made big, open, sweeping gestures. Wow, that's amazing, right? So you wouldn't say, wow, that's amazing, right? That's like deadpan humor. <laughs> and unless that's your style, you probably wouldn't express it that way. Um, so that's important too, right? These structures, these are simpler, right? Much more straightforward. We'll look at what it looks like with the business side of things as we continue. So I would like to pull from the, the participants here, from the audience. How comfortable are you with conversational English? Is it A, very comfortable? You use conversational English daily and feel at ease in various social settings? Is it B, somewhat comfortable? You manage everyday conversations, but sometimes struggle with things like slam, slang or idioms? Is it C, not very comfortable? You understand the basics, but often feel unsure 
or hesitant during conversations? Is it D, not comfortable at all? Find conversational challenge, conversational English challenging and avoid using it whenever possible. So what is it? Share with me in the chat what you personally feel. And there is no right answer. There's all the all the answers that you provide are right in this scenario, in this case. Okay. Robertson Fernando, thank you for your answer. What else do we have? What else do you think? Comfortable, somewhat comfortable, very comfortable, not comfortable at all. Not very comfortable. What do you think with conversational English when you're speaking to people and you're conversing with them and you know you how how comfortable is it how likely are you to want to engage in conversation with people and use your english and communicate and interact socially what are your thoughts share that in the chat i see people typing so that's good so in our community we focus on we, we spend time on conversational English, business English, executive skills, social skills, everything that has to do with conversation, written, spoken, we work on because this is a platform for developing your, pers your professional development skills and also those conversational and communication skills, including social skills. So if that is something that you want to gain expertise in and work on and master, this is a perfect community for you to do that. And you actually get to practice what we teach here. So it's not just watch a video, read an article, and try to figure it out. It's watch a video, read an article, interact with people, try it out, get feedback from me get feedback from other members, interact with the language, exchange with people, learn from your mistakes, see how you're doing. Do you see how it's so much more holistic and comprehensive? So that is extremely important if we want to improve our professional communication skills and personal communication skills. So don't worry if you feel like your conversational skills are not where they need to be you can come into our community, choose one of those plans that we have, Executive Communication Lab or Exploring Academy plan. And we welcome you with open arms because this is a community for you. Okay, now for part two, let's talk about what is this idea of business English. So we've looked at conversational English. Now we're gonna contrast it with business English. Okay, so with tone, it's more formal, right? And respectful. So good morning. How are you today? Is more appropriate than, hey, what's up? What's up, man? What's up, dude? Okay. You'd say that to your best friend or your college roommate. Not so much to your boss or even to your colleagues. So what are some examples? We're going to look now at vocabulary. But, you know, we have to think about vocabulary as something that it has different registers, right? So you might also find these specific industry jargon um, term terminology, right? Jargon and acronym. So things like synergy and ROI, these are common vocabulary items in the business world. So we've got this, right? Has anybody seen this before? Has anybody seen this acronym before? You have. Okay. Excellent. All right. Do you know what it means, Hatim? Well, I have the I have the <laughs> definition there. So EBITDA, right? Um, it's essentially earnings before taxes. Right. So that's that's a term and it's a financial term. Um, it's a metric. 
So that's something that you might hear. That's an acronym, right? Each word, each letter in EBITDA stands for another word, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization, right? So EBITDA. Um, and then we've got, what else do we have here? Onboarding. Has anyone heard this before? Onboarding. When you started a new job, you might've heard it, the onboarding process, right? It's when you are a new employee and you're being integrated into the organization, right? There might be training, there might be some orientation. Okay, Hatim, also me, wonderful. Okay, good. So these are starting to sound a little bit familiar to people. I work in HR, Liliana, very cool. So as an HR professional, exactly, you do onboarding, terrific. Right, so anybody who starts a new job will have undergone the onboarding process, right? That experience of being the new person and starting to learn the ropes, understand the system and do the training and the orientation. Wonderful. B2B, right? Another acronym. And believe it or not, we do write it with the two in there. B2B, business to business. So it describes transactions or interactions that occur between two businesses, right? As opposed to B2C, which would be business to consumer. So, you know, you might say your company is B2B or B2C, uh, or you work on, you know, you work on the B2B arm of that company. So that's a little bit about what we might find in more business vocabulary. Okay. So in terms of structure, so we've got, we've got three different sentences here. So in light of the recent market fluctuations, it's imperative that we reevaluate our investment strategy to optimize returns, right? So a big mouthful of a sentence, and I've bolded the terms and the collocations that, you know, are very businessy and that you should absolutely draw your attention to, right? Fluctuations, imperative, reevaluate, strategy, optimize returns in light of, in light of. All right, the second one, this is a question, right? You might say if you have any questions, but that's less businessy. It's more, it's better to use this structure. Should you have? Should you have any questions? Should you have any questions regarding the new policy changes? Please do not hesitate to reach out to the HR department for further clarification. Liliana, this might be a sentence that you use, a question that you might ask to your uh, trainees or employees, right? Should you have any questions? Yes. Amazing. Terrific. Okay. I'm happy to hear it. Okay. So that's a very nice, formal and polite way, very business, business way of, you know, saying if you have any questions, but it's should you have any questions? All right. The next one, given the accelerated growth in the last quarter, right? In business, we talk quarters in terms of time frame mostly, right? In, in, you know, school settings, we talk about scholastic years, we talk about semesters, but in the business world, we talk about quarters, right? Uh, we're considering expanding, considering expanding, right? Considering is a great verb to use um, in the business world. Considering expanding our operations to meet the increasing demand effectively, right? Increasing demand, increasing supply, these kinds of phrases are not uncommon, meaning they are common in the business setting, in the business world. All right. So do you see how that's a little bit more complex, right? It's more involved in a lot of ways. And it's, it's meant to be as clear as possible without being too verbose, right? Too having too many unnecessary words in there. They're not actually unnecessary words in here. This is actually succinct. Um, it's straightforward. It's to the point. But in business, you know, there's a lot to say. There's a lot you want to clarify. And you want to make sure that you are minimizing the risk of there being any misunderstandings, 
because misunderstandings are an expensive mistake, right? They are, they're costly. They're costly. So as you see, they're more complex and we're aiming for precision and clarity. All right, let's do a little quick question here. Um, any business terms from the list, from, from what we saw? From what we saw, I'm not going to go back to it because they were bolded, but I want to see if you can remember any of those business terms. Let's see. And if if you struggle, I can go back. But does anybody remember some of those bolded words, those words that or the phrases, the collocations that you might find in a business setting? Who can remember? Okay, EBITDA, good. Very nice. Anything else? Very good, Hatim. That one's a hard one, isn't it? Anything else? Can anyone remember the words that were bolded? I'll go back quickly and let's see if you can Anything? Any business terms that pop out? What do we have? Good, ROI, return on investment, optimize returns. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, good. All right. Our AR annual review. Very good, Robinson Fernando. Very nice. Okay. So now we've got some more terms. Okay. Um, what out of these can you say are the business terms? Type them in the chat. What do you find? are these business terms? ROI, return on investment. What's up? Synergy. Cool. Stakeholder. ASAP. Dude. Leverage. YOLO. You only live once. Benchmark. LOL. Laugh out loud. KPI. Key performance indicator. Awesome. Scalability. BRB. Be right back. Fiscal year. No worries, due diligence, BFF, best friends forever, SWOT analysis. Okay, Hatim says benchmark. Good. Robinson, let's get down to business. Yes, absolutely. That's a good term. It's a good um, expression too. Now, what on this list though are the business terms? Can you share one that's on this list already? On this list, what are the business terms? Stakeholder. Yes, very good. Okay. Back on track's good. It's not on this list. So I'm asking what is on this list that you can identify as a business term? Scalability. Very good. Scalability. All right. ROI. Very nice, Robinson Fernando. Fiscal year. Yes, Hatim. Very nice. SWAT. Absolutely. ASAP. Yes. Yes, Liliana. I know it looks like this would be confusing or maybe more conversational. It is conversational too, but believe it or not, this is also, we find it in the business world. So your boss tells it to you all the time and it works. It's fine. KPI. Absolutely. Very good. Key performance indicators. Let's do a few more. Synergy. Very nice. Somebody who hasn't interacted yet, feel free to write in the chat. That's what it's there for. That's what we have it for. 
All right. So are you ready to see? So I've bolded them. Okay. Due diligence, fiscal year, scalability, benchmark, leverage, ASAP, stakeholder, synergy, ROI. And you don't have to say return on investment. You can just use the acronym, which is wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. How are we doing so far? Yes. How are we doing so far? How are we doing? Let's get a thumbs up. Thumbs up in the chat. Um, and yes, Robinson, Fernando, OKRs, objectives and key results. They're they're both management frameworks, right? And they're they're used to you know help us set goals to essentially you know measure performance, but they do serve different purposes. Um, but but yes, the similarity with them is that they're both used for goal setting and performance measurement. Um, the difference is that the OKRs are actually broader, right? And they're more aligned with business objectives. And KPIs are actually more tactical and they're focused on specific, you know, focus on performance in specific areas. So that's a little bit of the distinction there, but I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. All right. So let's go on to part three. So now we're talking about differences in tone. Okay. So we've got conversational versus business tone. In conversational English, you'll say, hey. But in, English, in business English, you'll probably say hello or good morning or good afternoon, right? Um, catch you later. Catch you later is a casual way to say bye to somebody. Catch you later. More informal settings. But in business English, it's more so I look forward to our next meeting. I look forward to catching up next week. I look forward to our Zoom call. All right. When do you use which tone? That's the big question. So you can think of it this way. In conversational situations like a team building session or an informal setting would be more appropriate to have that conversational tone, right? So notice that in these team building sessions, that's still in a business setting, right? It's still in a workplace setting, but it's slightly more informal, right? So on the scale of things, are you talking to your colleagues? Are you talking to people that you're very close to at work? Are you talking to team members? Are you in a team building activity or event? Or are you talking to stakeholders? Are you in the boardroom? Are you at a networking event? Are you at a, in a scrum meeting? Are you talking to your superior? Are you talking to C-suite level execs? So there's still so much variety, even though it might be the workplace or the business world. This is why it's important to recognize this. So let's look at an example here, the team lunch announcement, okay? Conversational tone, so team building. Hey team, who's up for some pizza this Friday? Let's kick back and celebrate our project win. Okay, these are people that you interact with on a daily basis, you're very close to, you know, you, you roll with the punches with each other and it's more conversational, right? and you're gonna kick back and celebrate your project win, right? The tone there is casual, it's friendly, it's very much suitable for an internal team building event, like a celebratory lunch. Again, operative word here is internal team building event. It's not a cross-functional meeting where you don't know the other, um, you know, the people from the other industry or sectors. This is, this is a group of people with whom you are very closely linked and work with. So it's very appropriate. All right. What about in a client meeting follow-up email? So business tone, right? Dear client's name, thank you for taking the time to meet with us today. We're excited about the potential collaboration and look forward to your feedback on the proposal. Okay. So notice how this is formal. It's respectful and it's appropriate for client communications and formal emails. So perfectly fine for written asynchronous communication, such as email. All right. So what are some other scenarios that you can think of where you switch tones at work? Was it a lunch meeting? Was it a you know, pizza night at the office? Was it a team building exercise? Was it a networking event? Was it a meeting with stakeholders? Was it 
a client pitch. What was it? What was it? Any experience with that? Share it in the chat. Share it in the chat. Let's see. What are your thoughts? Being aware of switching is very important, right? Because you want to make sure that you know how to address the situation appropriately. So let's see. Liliana says, in the meeting at first, we start talking informally and then continue to more formal. Absolutely. That's a really good distinction. So even within that communication setting, that speech act of being in a meeting, the first part of it is going to start with people rolling in, trickling in, you know, and you might be paired up with people at, around the table and you're chatting with them. How was your weekend? You know, some small talk. Did you enjoy the fall weather? Did you enjoy, you know, that long weekend? Whatever you're talking about. And then you might switch gears a little bit because now you've segued into the meeting. You have the meeting minutes and you've got the, the, you know, agenda and things are more serious. And so then it turns to more formal talk. That's a wonderful example, Liliana. Thank you for sharing that. That's terrific. And what I love about this example, Liliana, too, is that it really showcases that beautiful transition, that seamless transition, right? It just happens automatically. It's not like somebody says, okay, let's first start this meeting with formal, with informal chatting, some small talk, some witty banter. And then when I give you the signal, we'll switch to formal talk, right? That doesn't happen. We don't do that. We're not robots. We're not AI. So it's not going to be mechanical like that. It just happens. It's fluid, but we need to pick up on these things, right? And I'm so glad that Liliana brought up this beautiful example because it is a quintessential showcase and display of how seamlessly we transition in our day at the office from informal to formal, to informal to formal, to formal again, right? So beautiful. All right, let's move to vocabulary shifts. Okay, so we've got some common phrases like, I get it. I understand the implications. So these are different. These are common phrases. But we've got conversational one, I get it. And then the business version, I understand the implications. So for in terms of expanding your vocabulary, I get asked this a lot. MD, how do I work on my vocabulary? How do I work on vocab acquisition? How do I boost my, you know, word word count, my toolkit, my this and that, right? So I want you to read industry publications, right? Things like that are relevant to your field. If you are in the IT industry, seek out resources in that space. If you're in tech, read the tech, you know, newsletters and blogs and um, this, the sections in newspapers. Use vocab acts. You can apps take courses at Exploring Academy. One of our example uh, sessions here is this is a module dedicated to ultimate guide to learning new vocabulary. You have this accessible to you in either of the plans you choose, Exploring Academy plan or executive communication lab. And we do we do live sessions, live workshops on vocab building as well because this is not something just for non-native English speakers, L2 learners, but also native English speakers need to do this too. And we have native English speakers, L1 English speakers in our community, and they too ask me, how do I boost my vocabulary? So this is designed for anybody who wants to learn how to be more effective at vocab acquisition and make sure that those words are sticking in our brain. And yes, of course, reading helps a lot. 
identifying the words, using them, getting feedback in sessions, making sure that you're using them correctly, right? And context always matters. Okay, structural changes. So complex sentences, right? And it's again for clarity, believe it or not, the more complex sometimes, the more clear it can be. So something like, as we saw before, right? Should you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Should you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send me an email. Okay. Why is it so important? Because as I mentioned, if you are clear and concise and you use precision, you will probably, most likely, the hope is, avoid misunderstandings, miscommunication, which are very costly in business, right? They cost us time, they cost us money, they cost us resources. So we wanna minimize the number of misunderstandings that happen. We wanna minimize the risk of that even happening. So that's why we've got to consider these, yes, complex, but also clear and precise phrasing and phraseology and sentences. All right, let's do a little quiz. Who's ready for a quiz? I think we're ready for a quiz. I'm excited. Are you excited for this quiz? All right. I will take that as a yes, a resounding yes. But feel free to write it in the chat too if you would like. Why not? Okay. Let's see. Okay. I think we're ready. So number one, drum roll, please. Which of the following is a business English greeting? Hey, what's up? Good afternoon. How's your day been? Yo, how's it going? Hiya. What do we think? What do we think? Okay. What do we think? All right, ready for the answer? B, very good. Good after day. How's your day been? All right, good afternoon. Okay, two, which phrase is more appropriate in a business email asking for clarification? What do you mean? Could you please elaborate? I don't get it, huh? Okay, looks like we have some answers in the chat. All right, answer is B. Could you please elaborate? What do you mean not clear enough? I don't get it. And this obviously B would be better if you said, could you elaborate on blah, 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 blah. Could you elaborate on this sentence? Could you elaborate on that situation? So you can even be more precise than that. Of course, it's contextual too. Okay, good job. Which term is commonly used in business English to indicate urgency? ASAP or ASAP, right now, pronto or quick? Good. Wow, look at you all. Terrific. The answer is A, ASAP or ASAP. You can say both. Wonderful. Okay. In business English, instead of saying, I get it, you might say, I blank the implications. And I'm going to help you out here. I'm going to give you some options. So totally get, caught, understand, no. This one's a little bit tricky, I know, but that's okay. Okay, thank you, Liliana, for answering. Sharik, thank you for answering. Anybody else? Don't be afraid to make a mistake. That's, it's the point, the point of, learning sometimes is to make that mistake so that we know we were brave enough to take risks and be outside our comfort zones. 
we don't have to get everything perfect all the time. Nobody gets everything perfect all the time. Then we wouldn't really learn anything. So could be A. So Liliana, that's a very good point. But I want to draw to your attention business English. Business English. Business English. Yes. So good point though, Liliana. So in business English, in business English, right? Instead of saying, I get it, you might say, so yeah, you could say, I totally get the implications. But again, totally definitely would be a no-no for business. That's very colloquial. Get, also, you don't really want to say, instead, you'd want to say, understand, understand the implications. So very good for those of you who answered C. And I know that that was your first instinct, Liliana, C, and you're right. Okay. Five, instead of saying we've got a problem, a more formal business English phrase would be, there appears to be a, you fill in the blank. There appears to be a, right? Problem is more defeatist, right? It's like, ah, oh, there's a problem. Oh, it's defeatist, more of a defeatist attitude. Whereas the other word I'm looking for, the other word I'm looking for starts with a C. Okay, Liliana, issue, yes, issue. So Adele's trouble would be a little bit like problem, right? It's more of a defeatist attitude, like, ugh, throw your hands up in the air, ugh. Whereas the other words I'm looking for is like more proactive, like it gets into that problem-solving mentality. So issue, okay, wouldn't be bad, but there's even a better word, okay, struggle, mm. Thank you for sharing that, Robinson Fernando. Um, that's more like the, the problem one, though, an issue one. Bottleneck, okay, a little bit better, Sharik. But what I'm looking for is one of these. This one's a little tricky, I know. Okay. All right. So it is challenge. A challenge shows that you're prepared to overcome it, right? There appears to be a challenge. So it's neither negative nor positive, right? We're a problem, struggle, bottleneck um trouble these are all more negative and in business we want to have this you know positive growth mindset we want to say okay problem solving mindset we can do this we can work together we can collaborate we can cooperate and overcome this obstacle challenge there appears to be a challenge but we can overcome it okay in a business setting instead of saying see ya you might say Thank you for your blank today. What are you thanking them for? Thank you for your. Okay. Thank you, Sharik. Any other ideas? Collaboration. Okay, Liliana. Okay. Attending. Okay, Adelis. Attention. Okay, you're all kind of getting at the very similar endpoint here, which is great. So the answer is time. Thank you for your time today, right? When somebody spends time, like you're, you're, you spend time with them and whatever they helped you with, maybe they shed some light on something, maybe they gave you advice, maybe they looked over a project proposal, maybe they interviewed you for your dream job, whatever the case may be, they gave you their time. Time is such a precious commodity and you can't buy more of it. <laughs> At least not right now, maybe in the future. So thank you for your time today. Okay. So I want you now to match the conversational English phrase with the business English equivalent. So for what's up, 
Would you say, good afternoon, how's your day been? Would you say that's an excellent suggestion? Or would you say thank you for your time? Or would you say colleague? Bye, Hatim. Thanks for joining us. You can always watch the replay, which I will post in the community. So be on the lookout for that because I don't want you to miss my special announcement. Okay, so is it, what do we think? What would, what would we replace what's up with? What's up? What's up? So I'm so the question I'm asking is what's up gets replaced by one of these phrases that don't have a letter next to them. Is it good afternoon? How's your day been? Is it that's an excellent suggestion? Is it thank you for your time? Or is it colleague? What's up in the business world? Yes, Sharik, very good. Good afternoon. How's your day been? Right. Instead of saying what's up, we say good afternoon. How's your day been? Okay, cool. What do we say for cool instead? Is it thank you for your time? Is it colleague? Is it that's an excellent suggestion? Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Adelis. Thank you, Sharik. Yes, Liana, you could say great. But then you'd want to say, you know, an excellent suggestion or a wonderful insight, something like that. Good. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. In business English, what would the equivalent be in conversational English? So we've got dude and no worries left. Okay, so thank you for your time is no worries. Good. Very good. Robinson Fernando, yes, you would say cool, no worries. That's fine. That's fine. And it's replacing thank you for your time. Good. And then colleague would be colleague in the business world is what in the conversational English world in some circles. Colleague and dude, right. Yes, absolutely, Sharik. Not apparent in all scenarios, for sure. That's very much, again, context dependent, but you do hear people referring to dude for both male and female. And again, it's it, it, it will depend on context. You can think of it more like in a college scenario or maybe, you know, a barbecue with, um, you know, people are watching the sports game that's on not so much in the business world we wouldn't we wouldn't really use that so that's a good distinction to make okay excellent job everybody i hope that you remember what we did today and i want to encourage you to join our community of practice so that you get to level up you get to take your learnings here and practice them with real people Practice them face to face on live video calls with me and with our other incredible members who are very wonderful people. And we have a really great time. We have these small settings, group coaching experiences, and it's terrific. And I want to bring your attention to something I'm very excited about that was you know several weeks and months in the making which is the executive excellence challenge this is a 33 day transformative journey taking you through business communication business english professional polish executive skills and if you join now 
you will be able to follow along with the live video calls. You get to connect with others. You can establish people that you're going to be conversation partners with. I was chatting with another member yesterday in our video workshop call, and they said that they have their conversation partners, and they're so happy to do that because not only do they get to join our live sessions, but they get to practice with their conversation partners, and they find a time that works for them. They, they could be in a similar time zone or the same time zone, and they get to practice, which is phenomenal. So, so many opportunities, ample opportunity to practice. You'll get immediate feedback as well because, again, we'll be doing these on live calls and risk-free practice. So the way it works is our um, the challenge is going to launch on Tuesday, October 17th. So it will be available to you then, and it's a 33-day transformative journey. So you'll be doing some you'll be watching videos you'll do self-paced learning you'll be doing prompts you'll be doing interactive quizzes and quests and then because you join if you join now ahead of launch date you'll be able to join for the live calls so if you don't join now then you might not be guaranteed to have those live calls along with this program because the challenge will stay up that you'll have lifetime access to it as long as you're a member of the Exploring Academy community. So lifetime access for however long you stay a member. And then because you join now, you'll get to have those live video calls and you'll get those, you know, feedback sessions and personalized corrective feedback and an opportunity to engage with the, the, the uh, materials and ask questions and be part of the Q&As and get all of your questions answered and be able to practice in a risk-free and fun way. So much fun. So does any of this interest you? Skill enhancement, networking, confidence building techniques, enjoyable, fun exchanges with people from around the world, including L1 native English speakers, risk-free practice in a judgment-free zone. Nobody is judging you. You get to, you know, be comfortable with talking and not worry about mistakes because mistakes, we change our mindset about mistakes. Not to mention the mindset shifts that I teach you in our community. You know, the mindset uh, alterations that we make, understanding, you know, what a fixed mindset is versus a growth mindset and adopting a growth mindset so that we're not afraid of making mistakes. Instead, we welcome them, we encourage them because they show us that we're getting outside of our comfort zone. Very important stepping stone to learning and to greatness. So Aparna wants to join the challenge. Wonderful, Aparna. So I'm going to tell you how to do that in a moment. Very easy, very straightforward. Um, and yes, a fun group coaching experience. These are nice small groups. You get individualized attention. You get lots of practice because you're with a small group of people in your cohort. Executive Excellence Challenge. This is going to help you polish your skills. It's going to help you be ready for those professional moments, those moments where you might find yourself in interviews, you might find yourself in stakeholder meetings, you might find yourself pitching a project to, you know, somebody who can help you make that project a reality. Um, there, they might be people you do business with. These could be at work. These could be with your, your teams. This could be in front of your managers, talking to C-suite level executives. The list goes on and on and on. We all need that professional polish. That's how we stand out. That's how we get ahead. That's how we land those dream jobs. That's how we get those opportunities wherever we are in the world, right? And you owe it to yourself to maximize your potential. And guess what? These professional skills that I teach you in the community and in this beautifully designed 33-day transformative web course challenge, plus the live video calls, if you join when it launches and a few days before even, you will actually get to use it, right? You get to use it. And it's very important because 
you don't want to just learn something and then never use it and then it gets dusty right on a shelf in your brain you want to be able to use it you want to be able to maximize your potential and that's what you will do with this 33 day challenge and what i wanted to say was that these skills are not only useful in english they're also useful in your l1 so it's so funny how many members tell me in the community that they don't just use this for english they use these skills in their l1 native language these professional development skills these strategies that i teach you for communication and executive presence are applicable to whatever your l1 native language is as well so it's you can think of it as a double training session in a way right that two birds idiom um and at no extra cost so that's incredible okay so you can master essential communication skills uh parna i will get to the cost in a minute i'm going to show you how you can sign up so that's a great question master essential communication skills check unlock your leadership potential check real world application these are real strategies that you can apply as soon as you learn them check personalized learning journey check access to expertise another check and a supportive community who is there through and through who's going to be there for you i'm always there for you too but the community that is what is so powerful about this it's so powerful and until you actually join a community and are with people that you see again and again and form rapport with form bonds with form friendships with maybe even become business partners with down the line you don't know right it's a great networking opportunity as well you see the power and the amazing opportunity there is in joining a supportive community so if you want that connection that communication and of course the community then what you can do is join one of these plans and in this executive communication lab you actually get more live workshops and some other extra added bonuses and exclusive content that you will not get in this plan so this is the more robust plan it's the premium plan and then you have the exploring academy uh plan here so the challenge will be available in either of these plans the difference is that you will just get you'll get much more um live video call time here as well as more resources and uh exclusive and um you know the materials and resources this is the more robust plan but to join the challenge it's available in both of these plans which is super exciting um and i'm very happy to bring this to you so it's at a wonderful price point you will not be able to match this anywhere <laughs> um i want to make it affordable to people and here it is so you know right now this is the price it will go up it will go up but right now for our october 17 launch these are the current prices that we have and you will get a one week free trial so that's incredible and you get full access to whatever the plan has to offer you no holding back so you'll get full access to the exploring academy plan if that's the plan you choose and you'll get full access to the executive communication lab plan if you choose that plan and like i said this plan has a little bit more in it well quite a bit more in it um it's the most premium plan that we have at the moment and this is another great plan but you don't get as much but it's up to you so if you are in the free webinar community plan right now which is free at cost free of cost and you get access to these interactive webinars then you can always upgrade and you can choose any of these uh the stars right so you can choose the stars and you can grant you'll be granted access by you know when you provide your details and and whatnot and aparna says can i try and pay for one month absolutely you absolutely can do that we have a month to month plan and we have a yearly plan so the yearly plan will give you a 30 percent discount um but we have members who do both and both members both types of members are very happy 
whether they do month to month or the annual plan. And it's really entirely up to you. So Aparna, that is a great solution for you if you want to try a month, by all means. Wonderful. And if you are coming from outside of the community, let's say you saw this um, webinar on uh, somewhere else, like on YouTube, then you can come into academy.exploring.co and you can choose one of these plans to get access to the Executive Excellence Challenge. So excited about this because this is something that we've been working really hard on. So what do people have to say in our community? Medea says, best investment. You won't regret it. Love that. Sida says, throughout most of my life, I've battled social anxiety. Joining the Swerning Academy has empowered me to overcome my fears and shut down my BS. Each baby step in this supportive environment has been transformative, boosting my confidence in both personal and professional interactions. Very nice. I had to give a presentation at work and I used the tips I learned from the community and everyone loved it. This community is different because it's not just about learning English, but it also focuses on real life, practical communication skills and real life situations. Very true. Marva says, Exploring Academy is very different from any training I've attended so far. Talking in small groups and everyone in the group participating in the conversation increases my self-confidence in speaking. In English and in different social situations. MD encourages everyone to speak in workshops and discussion sessions. She takes great care of everyone individually and takes great care so that everyone benefits. Wonderful. Edwin says, the style of interaction at Exploring is cutting edge. I love that he used that expression, cutting edge, incorporating innovative elements of teaching a second language. My speaking skills have improved in my daily interactions, and I have surpassed some typical language barriers of learning a new language. Every day in live discussions, I learn new words, expressions, and discussion items, which I use afterwards in real life settings. Raquel, I don't get to use English in my daily life, so I find it very enriching to have the opportunity to exchange with people from different countries and to learn about their customs and opinions on current affairs. Being in small groups allows us to be active in discussions and to lose our fear of public speaking. An MD is always there to push us and help us if we hesitate or don't know a word or expression. Glad to hear that. Dom, Exploring Academy is the best enrollment I've done in a training program. I'm here to improve my professional English skills, executive communication, and social skills. I believe this is a great tool and more people should join. I really enjoy the workshops Mary Daphne delivers in her paid membership. I encourage people to sign up. I clear my schedule every day to participate in these workshops. That's great to hear, Dom. So glad. Saval, both Mary, both Mary Daphne and all the members of the community are so sweet and smiling that you never get bored. You don't understand how time flies. With this community, I had the opportunity to improve my communication skills as well as my language. I have the opportunity to see and correct my mistakes with frequent community meetings. That's really important, right? That corrective feedback portion of it, right? That really helps us level up even further. And then Ishika is one of our native English speakers, and she says her goal is to become more socially savvy and build emotional social intelligence with people. MD is an excellent teacher and communicator. Her skills surely rub off on you as she eases you into better habits and makes everyone feel comfortable as the instructor and facilitator. I am already experiencing subtle shifts by learning from everyone and MD. The community's international diversity is the perfect practice ground to interact in multicultural settings. I feel comfortable to say things without thinking too much. As long as I put it across with integrity and grace, something that Exploring Academy integrates in its modules. So wonderful to hear that. So these are some of our lovely members. 
You have all been lovely as well. Thank you for sticking it out with me until the end. I really hope that you consider this incredible opportunity to join us for this challenge. Again, if you join now, you will be able to come and join those live sessions where we go over lots of the material. We, we get to practice the things that we teach in the challenge. You get to ask your questions. You get to interact with each other. You get to get that feedback. And it's, it's a lot of fun. So tell your friends to tell your friends they should join. And, you know, that way, the more the merrier. This is something that, you know, it just, with more and more people, it gets even better and more enriched. And, you know, we learn from each other and we invite cultures from all over the world because we believe in that inclusivity, of course, very important. And we live in a globalized society. We need to know how to navigate different cultures. We need to know how to understand different cultures, how to get along with each other, how to be a better human, how to communicate with each other with confidence, grace, and hu humanity, and empathy, and also know what the difference is between doing that in a conversational setting versus in an executive business professional setting, like in the workplace. So that is what I am gonna leave you with today. This was a very long webinar, one hour and a half. So thank you so much for sticking it out with me. It was fantastic of you to join and I look forward to seeing you in the community and for our executive excellence challenge so excited about that all right well see you then thank you again for joining me and have a wonderful rest of your day or evening everybody bye for now